All right, thank you, Mike. Um, so I'm just gonna start off today with a little um, overview of what Seesaw is, and then we'll get into the different parts. But off the bat, Seesaw is a digital portfolio that showcases learning for students. So you can kind of think about it as a binder that students are using to say, do all their work and then save it to different um, categories. So that's kind of what um, Seesaw is. Just want to say that we are all in, in this. This has been a new experience for all of us and found that Seesaw is an amazing app that we can use for remote learning um, as a way for kids to share what they've been learning um, at home while we're away from each other. It is a safe form and it allows for a lot of creativity um, for students to document their learning. Um, they will have their own journal within the classroom and that's a place where they can do photos, videos, drawings, and just really showcase their learning in an authentic way. So the difference between the student version and the version. And um, just to make sure um, we're clear on that, the student version um, is what your kids will be using in order to actually complete assignments. And then the family app is what families can use to see what their students are doing and to communicate with teachers. Um, teachers may or may not be using the family app. As long as you do have some way that you're communicating with your child's teacher, that's really the most important thing. So we'll talk a little bit more about the family app later on in the presentation. We do want to focus mostly though on the student version because that is the version that your child will be using at home to complete their um, activities and do school as a remote learner. So the um, student app, kind of a, a little snapshot of what it's like if you're using a phone or um, a, a tablet for that and then also the web um, based version there on the right, you can see what that looks like. So getting students to Seesaw. So making sure that your student is in their um, digital classroom is the first step here. So um, if your student has a VVSD Chromebook, they can open up a, a Chrome browser and, do, and type in app.cc dot me and that will take them to the to the image that you see on the right where they can click I'm a student. This is also linked on the um, district homepage or your um, child's building homepage and they can find that on the student on demand page. There's a little app they can click on that says seesaw and that will also take them to this um, option where they can choose I'm a student. If you are using a, a mobile phone or a tablet, you can go to your um, app store and download the app for free. When you, there will be two different apps. There will be the class and there will also be the family app. It's important that you choose the app for your student. And then again, if you're not using a VVS computer, but you have a computer at home, you can go to that same browser app.seesaw.me and um, click, click that to get into the image that you right. Once you click on um, I am a student, then you will see this sign in page, the student sign in page. And there's two different ways that they can sign up. And this depends on how your child's classroom teacher has set this up. Um, the first way is using the remote learning code. So down at the bottom, you see where it says text code go. You would type in that remote learning code that 
It's 12 digits. Um, it's three groups of four letters. And that is how you can identify that it is a home learning code. If your student has been using Seesaw and your teacher has it set up to sign in with Google, then they would just click that sign in with Google at the top. But again, you are clear and checking with your classrooms, your child's classroom teacher as to how they have that set up. Once they log into their classroom, this will be the view that they have their Chromebook. It will look a little different if you're using a phone or a tablet, um, but this is the Chromebook version. So on the left there, you can see the journal feed, and that is where kids will see um, their different activities. They'll see things that have been completed. They'll see announcements. Um, we'll all be there in that feed. Um, underneath the name, they, there is three different tabs. There's the journal tab, the activities tab, and the inbox. So in the journals tab, that is where they're going to see everything um, in that feed over on the left. In the activities tab is where they're going to find their daily assignments and they're called activities. And that is going to be the main place that your child is going to be when they're doing their um, their work at home. Um, the inbox is where they will see notifications from their classroom teachers. So for example, if the teacher sends out an announcement or if the teacher comments on an activity that they would, they've done, they'll get a notification in their inbox that lets them know that their teacher has sent them a comment um, or if work has been returned. So it's important too that they're also checking that inbox and those little red um, jewels on there indicate that they do have messages or activities waiting for them. When they click on the activities tab, they will see a list of all the activities that their teacher has assigned to them today. Um, in that activities tab, you can see there it says work um, for responses and class activities. So if they click where it's grade and it says waiting for responses, those are the activities that they have not completed yet. Um, and then once they've completed an activity, it will disappear from that tab. Over on the left, you can see um, what an activity will look like. Make sure the child is reading the directions first. A lot of times the directions will say to click on a link first before they add their response. And in this activity, you can see um, next to the rabbit's head, it says link. So that's an indicator that, that there's a link there that they need to watch or it might take them to a book to read. So they would click on that first. And then once they've completed that, then they would go to the green add response. And then that's where they would be able to um, show their When students are completing an activity, um, this will be what they will see. On the left-hand side are some different tools that they can use to complete activities. The T is for them to type text, and that can be altered in size and color and, and, um, and font. Have the microphone tool where they can record themselves talking. Underneath that is camera, and the camera allows them to take photos or upload pictures onto that activity document. Beneath that are three dots. That is where they can change the background color or add shapes to their activity that they're doing. And then all the way at the bottom are the quotation marks, and that allows them to add a caption or a voice recording there. Along the bottom are some drawing tools. 
there's a pen, a pencil, a highlighter, a magic glow pen, um, and an eraser that they can use to draw on their sheets. And then all the way on the right, you can see there's the color bar, and all of these things can be done with different colors and um, by clicking on that. Um, when you use the text box, when you click on it, there will be a little circle on the side with three dots. And when you click on that, it gives you a choice of the font that you'd like to use. You can center it. Um, you can change the color. So the editing for text are, are um, right on there to three little dots. So once your child is in there doing their activity, um, if they forget kind of what the direction said or they wanna check and make sure they've done all the steps, the directions or the instructions will be on the top of the screen. If they click that little spot at the top in the, in the black box, it will drop down and they'll be able to see that instructions um, that was on the activity in the previous screen. When they have completed their activity, they will click the green check mark, and that is how they turn in their work. Um, once they do that, the teacher will get a notification that it's been completed, and they'll check it and um, approve that post before it goes into the journal. They also have the option of clicking draft, and they might want to use that if they maybe they started an activity and then it was time to. Um, have dinner and they weren't quite finished, they could go back and um, access that activity later. Or if they were doing an activity and they were having trouble solving math problems and they needed a little extra help from their teacher, they could click that draft, put a voice comment, letting their teacher know what they're struggling with, and then, um, then the teacher will get that notification and be able to come back and support them with that activity. If they do click the draft button, they will have a notification at the top of their news feed. Um, they'll also get a notification in their inbox. So when they click on there, they'll see that their teacher has returned um, or that they have a draft there. So different places that they will um, be able to see that draft. And click on that, do the editing, turn it back in by clicking. So um, earlier we talked about the difference between the app and the class app. So we're gonna come back to the family app. And um, this would be a completely different app than the class app. So it would, if you were using the, um, an app store, you would see where it says family app and that's where you would click and download that app. But you do have to be invited by the classroom teacher. So if they're using the family app, they would send you an invite, you through email, you might get a um, text message that they would send to you and say, um, you've been invited to your child's Seesaw class, please click this link. If you already have the app downloaded, it will open right up into that app. If you haven't, then it will direct you to the app store to um, log into that. You can also um, go to app.seesaw.me, and instead of clicking I'm a student, you would choose I'm a member, and then you would be able to um, be part of the Seesaw Classroom family app that way. The family app will just allow you to see students work. Students will not be able to do these through the family app, and it will allow you to send messages um, back and forth to your child's teacher, able to see notifications that your teacher classroom teacher has sent out um, and it is available in multiple languages so if you were um, if you speak Spanish at home and you wanted to type that message in Spanish your teachers your child's teacher would receive that message in English and then vice versa they can back to you so that's a nice feature too for communicating but again, that is up to your classroom, your child's classroom teacher as to whether or not they're choosing to use. 
here's just a few of the things that um, are highlighted that the family app can do. And you see again, app.seesaw.me and make using the family app. So a few that have come up from families are, um, how do I know which way a student is, to, is supposed to sign into Seesaw? And you will need to check with your child's classroom teacher. There's a couple different ways that teachers are signing into Seesaw. So just um, make sure that you're checking with your classroom teacher. Are they using the home learning codes, which again is that 12 digit letters, um, three sets of four letters, or are they having students sign in with their Google account? What if I have multiple children and they are sharing one device? If this is the case in your family, then you will have to have your child sign in and out each time in order to access their Seesaw classroom. So your um, one child logs in, does their activities, and then signs out. And then the second child would sign in and sign out. So keep your home learning codes handy. Um, put those in a safe place so that they can be reused um, each time you're to sign in and out. You could also use multiple web browsers. Um, you could have one student sign in using Google um, or using a Google web page, and then you could also have them using um, Safari or another one of those, I think it's Foxfire, Firefox, um, to sign in. Will my children receive feedback on their activities? There's a couple different ways that teachers might provide feedback. Um, the first one is by approving your child's post. So if they do an activity and turn it in and it's approved, then that lets your child know that it has been accepted and that they did it correctly. Um, your child's teacher may also um, hit the like. There's a little heart at the end, at the bottom of activities, and they could click there and that, that they have seen it and approved it. And um, the third way is by um, providing voice feedback or text in the comment box. So those are a, a variety of different ways that you or your child could receive feedback on the activities that they're doing. 